Uma mau, não, Ana. Uma mau. Nice. Unboxing. That's how I would say that if I didn't know how to say words. You can't spell funboxing without unboxing. Funboxing, not a word. Unboxing is a show that we've created to talk about people who have donated at welcometothebasementshow.com and to look at the contents of our mailbag. It's not an actual physical bag. I only say mailbag because people can visualize that. People who are old enough to like have gone to the post office a lot. They anyway. still use bags there. They do? You may not know that. I, I guess They're, they don't stuff the envelopes into computers. And sometimes they have bags that are that are actually carts, like they're cart bags. Yeah. Take a trip to your post office. Find out how they do things. And drop something in the mail for us. Because yeah. we like it, and you'll be on the unboxing show. Ooh, look at all the mail! Let's find out who sent us postcards. This is from Sean Henry on his trip to Alaska. Oh, excellent. Mr. Benedict, who writes Quantum Leap. <laughs> I have seen that show. Yes, I've seen some episodes, yes. We've got a postcard here that is not a postcard. It is an old uh, Kurt Vonnegut paperback cover. That's pretty ingenious. Yeah, that's, that's clever. JTN says that Panic in the Year Zero was the inspiration for King of the World by Steely Dan. Huh. I've never heard that, but thanks for the info. <laughs> there we go. You know this book, God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater? I read this on a bus trip up to visit my parents. I think it's the only time I've read a book just straight through in one sitting. Vonnegut's very good for that. <sighs> oh, this is another one from Mr. Benedict. This is from Graham. He said that he also recently took a trip to Costa Rica, just like you did. Hey, I didn't see you down there. And I didn't see that postcard coming at me. You are dropping postcards today, buddy. Oh, well, it's looking a little bad. Pura vida. And we've got two from Andrew, our buddy Andrew. This is another one with unsung heroes from the revolution. Good. Andrew writes, Dear Craig, your lawnmower story truly touched my heart. Not the part about being married, but the part about lawnmowers sucking so much. Seriously, we live in the 21st century and we still have to cut our lawns by pulling a cord. That's a good point. Electric lawnmowers, you don't have to do that. That's... And they're much lighter. We've got here a letter from Elena in Finland, the home of rare exports. Yes. Elena has written us a very nice letter. She's very complimentary of the show. And one of the things she says is, Craig is hot as balls, mate. He set me a whole new standard for guys, both looks and intelligence. Well. And it looks like she sent us a little drawing. Why don't you open that up? I went to prom with a girl from Finland. We weren't dating, but I just went with her. Hey, it's us. That's me. And it's you. Now it's time to thank our donors, people who have gone to welcometothebasementshow.com, donated to our show. What kind of a special person does that? These people. Drew, who says, love this show, have been with it since day one. Greetings from Canada. Cody, Lindsay, David, Abraham, Isaac, Elizabeth, Kempson, Stephanie, Brian, Kyle, Herman, Sierra, Patrick, Maurizio, Robert, Graham, Rebecca, and Dan. Thank you all very, very much. And now we're going to answer some of our viewer questions. Patrick Varnava asks... Favorite Disney movie? Non-Pixar. Alice in Wonderland, I watched that I don't know how many times when I was a kid. And I had quite the crush on Alice. Sure. It's funny because I don't usually go for blondes. She got that little bow in the back. Yep. Trevor Hees, or Trey Voorhees, writes, Hey, hey, guys. <laughs> hey, hey. Would you ever rewatch a movie you disliked in the past to see if you might like it now? Yes, I would, but that's a real tough thing to do. It's like going back to a restaurant that gave you food poisoning. And there's so many other restaurants out there that I haven't been to yet. <laughs> so going back to rewatch a movie I didn't like is really tough. But I can think of one movie in particular. It's a movie that you claim to be one of your favorites. Someday I would like to go back and rewatch I'm Not There. Mm. I know what to expect now. So I feel like I can engage with it on a different level and maybe get something out of it that is somewhat pleasurable. Also, some parts of that are so dense and strange, particularly the Richard Gere segment, that you have to watch it more than once to even attempt to understand it. I need to go back to watch Burn After Reading, because the Cones are my favorites, and I hate that movie. Mm -hmm. I like it less than Lady Killers. Yikes. Yeah, but it has a lot of fans, and I want to see if I was wrong this entire time. You know, hotels, being at your parents' house... That's when you go back to watch the bad movies. Because yeah. you're flipping around cable and you're like, ah, eh, this is the closest thing to 
anything that's on. Packages. Packages. You were curious about this one, so I'll let you open mm, that. Awesome. And this one is from San Marcos, California, so we know what this is full of. Whee! <laughs> I made a mess. Islands and ships and all kinds of scenic vistas. What do you got there? Well, this is from DJK of Santa Clara, California. And we have a few DVDs. 30 Days of Night, which I've been meaning to watch. Dreamcatcher, based on the book by Stephen King. Oh, I've seen this. Morgan Freeman's eyebrows are hilarious. It's a very bad movie. <laughs> it is? Very bad. It's got a great cast. This, is, this looks like it might be a talent, talent bomb. bomb. Definitely. I watched Dreamcatcher right before we started doing this show, and I wish I hadn't. Yeah, it would have been good for the show. Would have been great for the show. Stealing Propeller Hats from the Dead by David James Keaton. Oh, yeah, David James. He sent us another book. Oh, that's the person who sent us this. Sent DJK. Us the, the last uh, projector. Craig seems game to wear thematic hats. It's oh. a hat. Only thing is I rarely wear hats in real life. Only here on the show. Why should I? Look at this. There you go. Look That's me in that hat. Look at you with your hat. Yeah. This is already looking more Scooby-Doo than I would have expected. <laughs> First scatological joke of the yep. movie. One P. For God's sakes. Come on, you're so smart. You're so smart you wrote nine symphonies. There's got to be something in this neighborhood for me to have sex with. <laughs> Bravo, Newton. Kudos. Thank you. You're the smartest guy named Newton ever. Name me another smart Newton. Ingenious. I'm very impressed by this product. It almost makes me forget about my sex addiction. <laughs> Thank you. And just the fact that these people still leave food out... When they know that <laughs> Beethoven is is around, it just shows me that they are incapable of learning. <laughs> what are you, some kind of animal lover? What am I, some kind of caricature of a criminal? The babysitter is fired. You're fired. If only they had a 14-year-old girl in this family who could babysit that kid. I'm not back in 15 minutes. Kill them all. This is just like that scene in Raising Arizona, except less funny. <laughs> This is like that scene in Thieves' Highway, but less funny. This is like that scene in Casablanca, except less funny, and it doesn't take place in a bar. <laughs> Daru! And now, the Zatoichi Report. My quest to watch all 25 Zatoichi sequels in 2016 continues. How is the original Z-Man doing? I don't have much to report this week. I did not watch a new film. So instead, I'm going to talk about the fourth in the series, Zatoichi On The Road, which I watched whilst in the cinema immersion tank. On the Road features a very familiar Zatoichi plot. At the request of a dying man, he agrees to escort his daughter to Edo. Along the way, we find out that everyone wants to kill Zatoichi. Not only is he a swordsman, but he also knows hand-to-hand -hand martial arts. Ah. And he knows how to torture a man with massage. <laughs> I've had that done. I got it done in Chinatown in New York City. It was the most painful half an hour of my life, but I felt great afterwards. I have a little poem here that I was inspired to write by a movie. It is called Future Man, and it was inspired by four consecutive viewings of Bottle Rocket. I thought you saw it five times. Yeah, but I wrote this after the fourth time. Oh, okay. A movie that I also watched while in the cinema immersion tank last year. That was when the cinema immersion tank was created. Future Man. The sad, drifting feeling of trying to find yourself in your mid-twenties. I remember kicking through those leaf piles, yourself eventually taken aloft by the autumn breezes, drifting, euphoric until it makes you seasick, and you're left firing Roman candles into the ground and remembering. What a melancholy time when college is over and you're blown like a dead leaf into the rest of your life, drifting and tumbling until you can catch root somewhere, sprout, and grow back into a green thing. Reminds me of a Rod McEwen piece. <laughs> you ever... Experience yeah. Rod McEwen. I, I, was, I was warned off. He would just be kind of sad. I went downtown today. There was no one there. I thought of going into a bar, but I just didn't want to see anybody. I just walked around. We'd write things like that. All right, let's just open some more packages, shall we? Yes. 
This is from Alfred and Kelly. This is from Ashley in Canada. Look at this. Look what she's done. Oh. This is like a work of art. On the back, we've got Robert Loja and uh, in memoriam, Alan Rickman. Collage is kind of a lost art. People have to spend more time with scissors and paper just making stuff. I almost yeah. don't want to open it. Maybe it's not meant to be opened. Oh, but there's a record inside. We got public library in, on Hastings on Hudson. At the car wash. Look at that. Do it, do it, do it, do it. At the car wash, man. That's cool. Car wash soundtrack. Look at this. A Wolfman postcard. Whoa. I'm kind of afraid to walk to my car tonight. Elvis Perkins, Ash Wednesday. Ah. I don't know who this is or what this is. Elvis Perkins. There's a song called The Night and the Liquor. The Night and the Liquor? Now you're talking my language. Alfred and Kelly uh, send a letter, and in it they ask, I wonder how you feel about the rush of superhero films and where this new genre is going. Do you think, A, that the superhero film is a modern emergence of a genre that will fall off in popularity? Or could it be that the superhero genre is one that sticks around leaving Robert Downey Jr. as the new generation's John Wayne? I don't have an answer, but that's an excellent theory. I think everything comes and goes. Yeah. We got another package here. I'm going to open it up. It's from T.A. Epley. Thomas Elva himself. He says you might know these guys from the I'm Not There soundtrack. What, what the, the hell? hell is going on? An album that I have on CD and now I got it on vinyl. This is Calexico. The Black, Black Light. Light. That is a great album. There's make-out music if I've ever heard any. Well, my floor is just littered with packing material because the unboxing is now done. And so it is time for us to bid you good night. You can see the new episode of Welcome to the Basement this coming Friday. We hope to, you will. Come back soon. Come morning. Hey, somebody threw away a dog. I'm Stu, the <laughs> garbage man. <laughs> Un perro. Oh, here comes an ass bite. I hope. Come on, Beethoven. Don't let me down. Mom, look, I dreamt I had a puppy and it came through. <laughs> Just like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Why would her dad do that? He seems to be really into non-dog related things. <laughs> <laughs>